Welcome back to Mountainside, or, or welcome for those of you joining us for the first time. My name is Mark. I'm part of Barty's Kids Club team, and we're here for another episode of Barty's Virtual Field Trips. I'm here today with a much more familiar face, so Professor Ross. Uh, Professor Ross, what do we have in store for us today? Hey, Mark. Uh, so today we're going to be diving into chemistry, more specifically chemical reactions. We're going to be exploring acids and bases, uh, what is an acid, what is a base, and we're also going to be looking at uh, the differences between physical changes and chemical changes. All right, you ready to get after it? Absolutely. Let's do it. Welcome to the Mountainside Kitchen. Professor Ross is here and he's going to explain to us what pH is and do a little demonstration. Professor Ross, what is pH? So pH is the measurement of how acidic or how basic our solutions are. So you could be testing water to see how much acid or how much of a base it is. Okay, let's take a look back at some of those terms Professor Ross just introduced. pH. In chemistry, pH is a scale that tells us how strong of an acid or base a solution is. pH is measured on a scale of 0, a strong acid, to 14, a strong base. An acid is a chemical compound that's able to dissolve some metals and turns a shade of red when tested with a pH indicator. In a moment, you're going to see Professor Ross's recipe for an indicator that you can make at home. Some acids are strong and others are weak. A base is a chemical compound that can be used to neutralize or cancel out an acid. Like acids, some bases are strong and others are weak. Before Professor Ross gets started, we did want to share this important message. Kids, if you're going to try any of these experiments along with Professor Ross, you must have an adult supervision. And remember that some of the chemicals that Professor Ross is going to use are dangerous and should only be handled by adults. All right, guys, just like every experiment that we're going to be working with, we have to make sure that we think safety. So when you guys do this along with me, make sure that you guys are using proper uh, handwear like gloves. Make sure that you guys have any type of safety glasses, sunglasses might work, and make sure that you guys always have an adult supervisor along with you guys. So we're going to be working with a lot of common uh, household chemicals that you guys are going to kind of find somewhere in the kitchen or anywhere else. We're going to be uh, working with some Sprite. We got some lemon juice here, we got some baking soda, we also have some bleach, and we have some ammonia. Now, what I'm going to be using uh, to kind of indicate these pH levels is a solution that I made up myself. This is simply a red cabbage juice. So you just take red cabbage, mix some of those leaves with some warm water, blend it up, and make sure that you guys kind of filter out the cabbage chunks so that you have this purple juice as we go along. So when I introduce this solution to any of these chemicals that we have here, they should change colors. There's going to be a reaction and that's going to be telling us or giving us some indication as to the level of acidity or how basic that solution is. So keep in mind that this is a simple red cabbage water solution for our pH indicator. Uh, there are other indicators out there that you can get online that will give you a more accurate reading of the acid and base readings of these different solutions that we're going to have here in the plastic cups. So let's get started. We're going to start here with our uh, Sprite. So we're going to pour just a little bit in. Keep in mind that the pH uh, indicator is purple. So I can move that one up for you. And then this is going to be our lemon juice. See there is a slight change in color there. And then this is going to be our baking soda. And here is going to be our bleach. And lastly, our ammonia. When we return to Professor Ross, hit the pause button. Then take a few minutes, using the pH scale that we have on your screen, write down an estimate for each of the solutions. Remember that pH is on a scale from zero up to 14. Then ask an adult for help or permission and go online to look up the actual values of each of our solutions. When you're done, answer the questions below. How'd you do with your estimates? 
And after you've answered that, think to yourself, was the red cabbage solution a good indicator or not? And why do you think that? So here's Professor Ross's recipe for red cabbage pH indicator. If you have a chance, it's pretty fun to mix up. Try to make a batch at home and then talk with your parents. What are some items around the house that you can grab and test out your red cabbage pH indicator? Then you can always go online to look up what the real pH levels are for each of the different things you tried. Have fun. So now I'm going to show you guys what happens when you introduce a weak base to a weak acid. So right here in this petri dish, I have a mound of baking soda. You guys can find this in your kitchen. Um, I also added some red food dye to that so we can kind of see um, a more colorful reaction. And I'm gonna introduce our weak acid, which is gonna be vinegar, another solution that you guys are gonna be able to find in your house. So we all know what happens when you introduce vinegar to baking soda, but what's going on is that since they are opposing one another on that scale, that pH scale, um, you're actually going to be neutralizing that acid, which is going to be this vinegar, okay? So if we look closely, my lab assistant here, Adam, he is not following the proper safety procedures. Um, he very well does not have any arms, so he does not have to worry about his safety gloves, but he is not wearing his safety goggles. So take a note from Adam that he is not practicing any safe procedure, unlike us here. So I have here my vinegar in this uh, plastic container right here, and I shall pour it on to the baking soda. And there you have it. There are a ton of great resources online with instructions on how to use the reaction between baking soda and vinegar that Professor Ross just showed us to make a volcano. Hey kids, remember to ask your parents permission before you make a huge mess in the kitchen. And parents, keep in mind that food coloring is a dye and will stain most surfaces before you show your kids where you hide it. Have fun. Welcome back everyone. We are outside for our last couple of demonstrations uh, showing us some new aspects of chemical reactions. Um, I'm gonna be showing you guys the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. So an example of physical change would be this piece of paper. So this is just a normal piece of paper. Um, and you guys would call it a piece of paper. But if I were to fold it, if I were to crumble it, if I made an airplane out of it, it would still be a piece of paper. You still identify it as paper. So that would be a physical change. Would... Now, if I were to take this piece of paper and I were to do something like... burning it, it is now going through a chemical change. All right, so this stuff in my hand, you would no longer call this paper, you would call this ashes. So this changing from paper to ashes, that is a chemical change. The identity of the paper has changed entirely and you would no longer call it paper. So I'm gonna show you guys one other experiment that demonstrates this in a very cool and kind of explosive way. So what we have here is a ceramic bowl with some sand in it. I put some substance on it that'll help kind of quicken um, a burn when I, when I do light it on fire. But I'm going to add this mixture that I have. This is a simple mixture of baking soda and sugar. So I'm gonna simply just add it, kind of put it into this like volcano-esque cone of sand here. And this experiment will take a little bit of time, so we'll do a time lapse so that you guys can see the full effect of what's gonna happen. But this is an example of um, a chemical change, and not only that, how two um, mixtures together are going to kind of complement one another to make a really awesome looking um, result. Let's review some of the things Professor Ross just told us. A physical reaction is a change in the shape or appearance of an object that usually can be reversed or undone. Examples include the boiling of water, crushing a can, shredding paper, or chopping wood. A chemical reaction, anytime a new substance is created, 
This is usually two or more substances combined to form a new substance. Chemical reactions are not easily undone. Examples include burning wood, cooking food, rusting of iron, and the germination of seeds. Please do not try this at home. So this is the production of uh, burning baking soda and sugar. So this substance, this is our carbonate. This is what you get from burning that sugar and it is able to kind of be pushed outward because that carbon dioxide that's being produced when we burn that baking soda. So if you kind of look at it, it kind of resembles like a burned marshmallow. It kind of smells like a burnt marshmallow, but it's very lightweight and it's kind of breaks apart when you like apply any pressure to it. And you can see we're still producing some good um, kind of shape from our carbonate. So this experiment is called our fire snake. Um, and this was the last experiment that we had for you guys for today. So hopefully you learn a little bit about chemical uh, reactions um, and some of the substances that we can find in our kitchens that you guys can work with your, uh, your family. Um, but thank you guys for joining in and we'll see you next time.